Good morning again from the e-learning platform of the University of Teramo. Comparative law again. One important element in any legal system is uh, what is normally called the list of sources of the law. What is a source of law? Uh, this concept can have a number of different meanings. Within every legal system there is an authorized list of sources, of course, which could include and normally include the law, regulations, uh, customs sometimes, and other sources. In comparative law, we study legal systems from outside and we also compare them. So we cannot simply accept the official list of sources in each legal system to understand the legal systems we study. We need to observe the system from outside and compare it with others to identify all the real life forces that contribute to shape the outcomes of the legal system. So there is a clear distinction between official sources and final outcomes. Official sources, may we say, are the authorized sources like, for instance, a civil code. The final outcomes is the real, the actual rule uh, delivered to the final user, the end user of the law, by the legal system. So clearly we may have the same formal source. For instance, the French Civil Code, which is a world famous textual source of law. This is enforced in a number of different jurisdictions. The same textual source in real life produces different outcomes according to the different jurisdictions where the code is enforced. So there must be something between the source and the end user that produces differences in the law. We can imagine a, a water system. Let's imagine we have a beautiful mountain covered in snow where, where we have a fantastic freshwater spring springing out of the mountain. This is the source. The problem we have is how do we bring the water or the law to the end user, meaning the people, the citizens living in the city. Clearly you need to drink water and you cannot walk every morning to the mountain to get your water. So there is a water system designed and operated to bring you the water. So you open your tap and you drink. There is a system between the source and your tap. The system connects the formal textual rules in the sources to the final outcomes. We study this in comparative law. We study this. First of all, we study the sources. We need to study them. They are the first thing we need to approach. But obviously, this is not enough. Otherwise, it would be enough to consider that the French civil code is in force in France and in many other jurisdictions to conclude that the law in those different jurisdictions is the same, which is not the case. So there must be something in the system producing legal diversity. Let's imagine that every legal system is a complex system of pipes. And we can imagine that in some points of junctions of the legal system, there are cracks so that some of the water gets lost and never reaches the end users. And we may also imagine that in other junctions of the legal system, there are cracks allowing external elements to enter the system. Meaning that the final, the outcomes in different areas of the city or of the jurisdiction might actually be 
roughly similar but also different because of the different uh, stories of the system bringing the water in the different areas of the jurisdiction. We may um, imagine that uh, a number of uh, facts may happen. Let's imagine we have an open uh, reservoir outside the city where all the water is uh, stored for distribution and then uh, clearly sometimes for external elements like rain, different water may get into the system. Or imagine there is a disruption in the system somewhere. So in some specific area of the jurisdiction, uh, the water might need to be distributed with alternative means, like a, a, a truck bringing water in some areas of the jurisdiction, so that a different water is also received by the system, uh, which sometimes we call a legal transplant or a legal infiltration of different elements within a legal system. Uh, we may also imagine that sometimes, uh, let's imagine a, we have a reservoir here, an open reservoir here, uh, for a deliberate action of some individual or groups, which could be a legal action or illegal action or quasi-legal action, uh, some of the, can we say, water uh, coming from this person or group may be introduced in the system, whether legally or not. Again, uh, this may not be much in the case I just draw. Uh, most of us don't have that much water available to affect an entire water system in a city. But some persons or individuals might have considerable amounts of water available, especially if they have important position in the local society or community or jurisdiction. So their water may actually change the overall result, introducing new visions, new rules, new approaches. So clearly there is a lot to be analyzed and a lot to be learned from what happens in the distribution system between the sources and the end users. To avoid confusion, we very often do not use the word source to indicate all the elements in this area affecting the final result. Very often we use the word legal formants. They are, like sources, elements producing legal results in combination with the sources. So when you drink your water here at the end of, of the line, are you really drinking the source water? Are you really drinking the water from that particular source, like the beautiful Grand Sasso mountain we have here in Teramo? Is this water, this one, the same water as this one? And the answer is always yes and no. It depends on the context, it depends on the idea you want to convey, it depends on the point of view of your analysis. So it's certainly the same water by and large is enough to say that it's the same water to identify one important feature of the distribution system. But we also need to know that it's not exactly the same water and especially that it's not necessarily the same water in the different areas of the city or jurisdiction where the water is distributed due to the presence of many formants, many elements affecting the end result so that the outcomes might be very different even in the presence of the same source, text, legal text. So it's a lot of fun to see what happens between the source and the end users tap. That's all for this small pill lecture on sources and legal formats. See you soon and bye-bye again. Ciao.